And the ties for the head ball coach in the ACC don't just start and stop, of course, with that 1989 ACC championship. It was way back to 1979 where the head ball coach was the quarterback coach in Atlanta for Georgia Tech, then the offensive coordinator at Duke for a couple years. Actually played a close one against Coach Bowden's team, uh, the Auburn Tigers, then two-time ACC Coach of the Year. On and on and on. And, and not only you, you, you coached against them. You, you've been around them, I know, quite a bit. Nike trips and everything else. Your dad's played against them and, and thinks a lot of them. Just maybe a thought, Coach, real quick while we've got a chance. You know, James, I'll let you all kind of talk about the big picture of what he meant to college football. But I can relate to the Duke experience, what he had. I coached at Duke for four years, then kind of watched him as he won. That ACC championship at Duke was probably his best job of coaching. He was always taking less talent and beating teams with more talent. you got to remember at that time that Clemson was a really dominant team. And even North Carolina State, they had a coach named Dick Sheridan. They were really making a run through the ACC and even North Carolina. But to take those teams and do what he did, and then the way he did it in that passing game. What he did at Duke was kind of what he initiated and took into the SEC. But the things he did at Duke were really special. In fact, I left Duke and went to the University of Alabama as a wide receiver coach. My offensive coordinator at that time, Homer Smith, said you can visit one team to study on offense. Where are you going? I I went to Duke and studied uh, Steve Spurrier. I know, Takiyo, you've got some SEC uh, knowledge of him because you spent some time against him. Yeah, I did. M my time, especially coming up through high school, SEC country, especially where I'm from, and to have the experience to not only just watch Coach Spurrier uh, coach his ball players, but to allow the freedom for, the, for those guys to express themselves when they're out there on the football field, it was exciting because for us, we loved it as a high school recruit, and I just thought the world of Coach Spurrier. But it all went wrong. Oh, we could have been teammates, man. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. I got to tell you where it went wrong here, guys. <laughs> he came to Sandersville, Georgia, recruited a guy by the name of Robert Edwards. Everybody knows him, yep. especially here in the state of Georgia. And uh, this, is Coach, this is Coach Spurrier to a T. He came in and put his feet up on the table and said, hey, we're going to win it every year. I need to know right now. Are you going to come or not? Because if you don't come, I'm going to give you scholarship away, period. Well, that's, that's him. Wow. And that, no, it, and it was, and that's where, that's where he, because he probably had to go golf that afternoon. He, and he wasn't like, he wasn't going to chase anybody around. No, no. no matter how good a young Takeo Spikes was, Ovi. Oh, but it was wow. like, shoot, we'll win without you. And he meant it. He meant it, Ovi. And that type of attitude that he has, that's what changed the culture around South Carolina. And I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. I never, never met Coach Spurrier, never played with him or against him. But I know I can feel the effects he had on the whole state on that program. Growing up, it was always about Clemson in that Charleston area. Everyone wanted to go to Clemson, South Carolina. They didn't win as often. They weren't as good. It wasn't as fun. When Coach Spurrier went there, all you heard was people in Charleston, people in South Carolina talking about, oh, you got to play for this guy. Oh, this guy is a difference maker. Oh, he will make sure the best comes out of you. And every player wants to be at their best, have a chance to play the next level. So when those Jadavian Clowney's came, those Alshon Jeffries, you know, all the quarterbacks and the superstars he had, he helped nurture those guys. You go play for Spurrier, good things are going to happen. Oh, yeah, and, and he did it his own way, that's for sure. Coach, you can appreciate this. Never scripted a practice. You know, he may have the last few years here, but at Florida, never scripted a practice, which wow. is just unheard of. Show me cover two over there. Let me see cover two. And just he knew in his mind what he wanted to see, what, he, what looks he was going to get. And usually coaches spend so much time each week scripting those plays. And also, sometimes a practice might last guys about an hour, hour and a half. If they had a big bomb they hit, shoot, let's take it in. And then the defensive coordinators, it drove them nuts because they didn't get a full <laughs> practice in. But I owe a whole lot to the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier. Everything that I have has so much to do with being a Gator, and he gave me an opportunity, and I thank him for that. Congratulations on a heck of a career, Steve Spurrier, and good luck with that retirement. I'll see you over at Crescent Beach, my man. All right, all right, my man. We'll be right back on ACC Gridiron Live. You guys stay right there, would you?